Na, Agostão Jánosi. And the aim of my work is to join to the united scientific effort to reduce the impact of COVID-19. I'm working at the Heimpal National Pediatric Institute, where at the COVID outpatient clinic, I have the opportunity for weekly experience with the patients affected by the infection. My mission is to acquire deeper understanding of research methods, hence increasing my knowledge in pediatric care. A short overview of my project list here. There are three perspectives that we consider remarkably important. Firstly, we investigating the prevalence of asymptomatic infections for understanding viral transmission patterns. Secondly, we analyze the accessible data on TNF-alpha inhibitor therapy in severe COVID-19. And lastly, we could have a deeper understanding of COVID-19 by conducting an analysis of our prospective cohort. Short review of my first project. We are investigating the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in different pediatric age groups. The symptoms of COVID-19 are similar in children and adults, but the frequency of the symptoms varies. Children are likely to have a higher proportion of asymptomatic infection than adults, therefore they have a key role in the transmission. Asymptomatic patients can easily pass through fever screenings or other targeted testing programs. They spread the virus in a completely hidden way without any restriction. Our aim is to investigate the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in different age groups. We examine PCR-confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection in children because our hypothesis is that the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 is higher in school age, 6 to 12 years of age, uh, children than in other pediatric age groups. The systematic search was conducted in three databases and we included 153 articles to the final analysis. Let me show our results. In the general population, the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in children was 45%. This means almost half of the infected kids are asymptomatic. If we examine the different age groups, the higher prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in school-age children is striking. It is 65%. And the risk ratio age dependency plot provided by the dose response analysis also shows that the risk ratio increases over time until a plateau between six and 10 years of age and then decreases. And this plateau was evident in all three of our analyses. All three, the prevalence analysis, the risk ratio comparison analysis and the dose response analysis also producing the same consistent result. During the data extraction, we realized that there were many different screening strategies um, during the pandemic, such as drive-through testing, inpatient testing, newborn testing, contact tracing. Therefore, we created seven groups in addition to the general population based on the different PCR screening strategies. The table show the, the proportion of asymptomatic infection in each screening strategy and age group. Let me lead your attention to the seventh group with newborns from infected mothers. 69% of them were asymptomatic, which is important if you think of the high number and wide scale of post-COVID cases and symptoms. In summary, we highlight that half of all SARS-CoV-2 infected kids are asymptomatic with the highest prevalence in the school age group. It is possible to create recommendations for targeted screening protocols, for example, in schools. Meanwhile, the regular forehead temperature measure could be ineffective and unnecessary there. We can highlight the importance of vaccination because um, vaccination has the potential to, to protect um, vulnerable groups from severe disease acquired even from an asymptomatic infectious child. And in the case of diversified symptoms and complaints, the history of asymptomatic COVID-19 should be considered. There is a need for further investigations of predisposing factors as well. Our target journal is JAMA Pediatrics. With my second project, we are investigating TNF-alpha inhibitors as a therapeutic option in severe COVID-19. 
because studies found association between the rising level of TNF-alpha and severe COVID-19 cases. Hence, TNF-alpha blocking could be a favorable intervention on modifying the inflammation. Our aim is to investigate the usability and safety of TNF-alpha inhibitors as a therapeutic option. We included studies that conducted the analysis in a population with SARS-CoV-2 disease, and we accepted a population as a control group that only has standard of care without any administration of TNF-alpha inhibitors. Our hypothesis is that the administration of TNF-alpha inhibitors associated with better clinical outcomes in patients with severe COVID-19. The systematic search was conducted in three databases, and we included five articles to the final analysis. We have some preliminary results. We investigated uh, an inflammatory parameter, CRP, on the first day of the study, and we found a slightly higher median difference rate in the population with, uh, treated with TNF-alpha inhibitors. And the ventilation and mortality results show a favorable trend for the usage of uh, TNF-alpha inhibitors. And lastly, we, uh, investi we could have a deeper understanding of COVID-19 with our registry analysis, uh, analysis of 517 prospectively collected patients' data. There are still a lot of gaps in our knowledge of COVID-19, especially in connection with children. Our purpose is to create a descriptive analysis based on our unique cohort. There are more than 500 included children with data from every inpatient day, and biological samples were collected uh, constantly uh, throughout the follow-ups as well. We are working on the two-year, the last, the second-year controls now. And uh, lastly, there are three distinct steps we aim to improve the care of COVID-19 patients. Um, we are investigating the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in different pediatric age groups. We are also investigating the effectiveness and safety of TNF-alpha inhibitors as a therapeutic option, and we could have a deeper understanding of COVID-19 with our registry analysis. Thank you for your attention. I chose a quote from Muhammad Ali, don't count the days, make the days count. You mentioned you are still working on your results part and forest plots. Do you planning any further analysis and the involvement of other outcomes? Um, yes, we working on <coughs> the other outcomes. We would like to examine the length of hospital stay um, the, the ICU, the need for ICU admission, and um, also some laboratory parameters um, in connection with this project. Yes. You mentioned the newborn group, and I was wondering, were they symptomatic? And if they were, do you advise any intervention for newborns from positive COVID, positive mothers? Yes. Um, we examined asymptomatic COVID-19 in, in um, that group. So um, in the seventh group, there were 69% uh, asymptomatic newborns from infected mothers. So um, it's, it's a good implication for research for that high asymptomatic rate in, in this um, um, population. Um, there are different theories about that, but they are not proved yet. So um, we, were, we, um, we were really interesting with that high proportion of asymptomatic infection. Very interesting results, congratulations, and I'm happy that this slide came back because my question would be also related to this. I might misunderstand something, but in the first row you say that the screening strategy was hospitalized due to COVID-19, so that's why they made the test and yet 38% was asymptomatic. The, why were they hospitalized due to COVID if there is no test yet and no symptom? 
they had tests, but they, they uh, haven't got symptoms, yes. Um, but there were different uh, protocols in the countries, and uh, some patients ha have to go to the hospital even if um, they didn't get any symptom. So this category um, uh, shows that they, they were hospitalized because of the COVID-19. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Even because without symptoms. In the age group between 6 and 10, it, it makes perfect sense that zero was asymptomatic. COVID with us more than two years, and you are daily working on a COVID ambulance, and you have uh, very interesting results. Did you suggest any modification on the daily, daily care of the patients for, to the administrative uh, um, chief of the hospital? Um, I can highlight the importance of vaccination mm -hmm. because, because of that um, high number of asymptomatic uh, <laughs> patients. They, they can um, spread the virus in an absolutely completely hidden way and the, the vulnerable groups can be, we can protect them with the vaccination. So maybe that. Mm -hmm.